This non-fiction thriller, as it has been described, has won much critical acclaim the world over and continues to do so. It's now a household name among many people who have a passion for Africa and the people of this short-changed continent. I speak here of the documentary Big Men, written and produced by Rachel Boynton and executive produced by Brad Pitt and some other executive producers, I should say. Rachel is here with me in the studios and has graciously agreed to speak with us about her work. You're welcome to Sahara TV, Rachel. I'm really honored to be here. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you so much for coming. Before we go into, this, into the actual interview, I would like us to take a quick sneak peek at your, at your work. Can we quickly look at the, Absolutely, the, the sure. trailer and come back? This field is going to be worth a lot, a lot of money. A flowing oil. A flowing oil. An American company has discovered a massive new oil field off the coast of West Africa. We're looking at a $11 billion development on a billion barrels, net to us, $2.2 billion, net to the company. This is a substantial oil project. Cosmos strategy was clearly higher risk, but also much higher reward. The work you are coming to do in Ghana merits Thank respect. You. We know how important it is for the country, and uh, we intend to do a really good job. So Except you're going to be proud of us, We're I promise. We're going to be proud of you. We're going to be paying out on the pipe. Go about 5%. There's a lot of money at stake. People's focus gets more intense, and more people will look to get a piece of it. This attack highlights the vulnerability of the oil infrastructure here. Opposition leaders declared the winner of Ghana's presidential election. The previous government was nice to Cosmos. Certain things will have to change. The goal is to maximize profit. But can you get the cash? Or will there be so many other people and entities involved that you can't earn a profit? very wonderful piece of cinematography. Thank you very much once again. First of all, let me ask you, what, what motivated this, this project? Well, originally, I thought I was going to make the whole film in Nigeria. I heard about this idea that American oil companies were very interested in the Gulf of Guinea. Mm. And I wanted to go there and get access to an American oil company and tell a story from inside the company. Um, and my original thought was I would go to Nigeria because at the time that I started back in 2005, 2006, the militancy in the Delta was sort of reaching a peak. And there was a lot of, in the news about oil prices peaking because of attacks. And I thought, well, there could be a really interesting movie to be made there. Mm. So okay. that was my first thought. All right, what was the process like though? With what, what was the experience like? Of making the film? Of making the film, yeah. <sighs> well, you know, I. I I produced it, I directed it, I carried all the luggage, I, you know, <laughs> so I, I met a lot of people. I, I love Nigeria. I learned a tremendous amount from spending the time that I spent there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as, a, as an experience for me as an individual, it was an amazing experience. It was, my mind was expanded by the experience. But it was also very difficult. I mean, you know, there were several film crews that were arrested and deported in Nigeria while mm -hmm. we were working there, and that was always a concern. Um, and getting access to all of these people was not easy, you know. Mm. With the security, for instance, yeah. you actually went into the heart of the of the, the militant zone. Mm -hmm. What was it like? It's not as scary as it's all cracked up to be. I mean, I in the sense that 
you go into anybody's living room, you want to get permission from the person whose living room it is, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't walk into somebody's house without asking them first. So it's important when you're going into any environment to make sure that you have the right permissions, that you're, you're in contact with people who can sort of tell you how to behave, where to go, where not to go. Mm. And, you know, I made sure that I did that. Okay. And what, what about bot bottlenecks, like bureaucratic bottlenecks and stuff like that? You had journalists, you had politicians, you had militants, yeah. like you everybody on this project. How did you manage that? I was a, I spent an enormous amount of time traveling back. I live in New York, in New York City. Mm. So I spent about a year and a half traveling back and forth and back and forth like a crazy person. And I met many Nigerians who, specifically Nigerians in the very beginning, who yeah. were incredibly helpful to me and very open to the idea of making a film about the oil business there. Um, so that was the first step. And then I got access to Cosmos Energy in Dallas. And once that happened, I started making more connections in, in Ghana and in Accra. And I, I found that politicians there were very open as well. I mean, I think a lot of people are eager to have their story heard. Mm. And when they feel like they're going to be listened to and they're not going to be judged, I think people are often very willing to talk. Okay, now the film Big Man is a film about greed. Yes. Not just American greed, also African greed, as I would say, the politicians, human the greed. chiefs, human it's, it's greed. It's about humanity. It's a film about people. Totally. What, what's, what in your, your assessment is who really are the, the, the big men? Who are the villains here? Is it the oil companies? Is it the chiefs? Is it the politicians? You know, it's so funny. Somebody, I did an interview yesterday, and somebody asked me exactly that question. Mm. And I, I don't really approach it that way. I mean, first of all, the theory of the film is everyone wants to be big, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a point in the movie where I meet with the Bema King, and I say, it seems to me like everyone in Nigeria wants to be big. And he says, and you too, yeah, <laughs> you want to be big. <laughs> yep. And I kept it in there on purpose because I really do feel like, you know, it is something that connects everyone in the film. Being big in the film, it means making a lot of money, or it means having a really big reputation, right? Mm. And everybody in the film, wants those things. It's not unique to the oil men or the, the government officials. It's, it's about everybody. Okay, now someone in the audience said the film was depressing. Hmm. Okay. Did you set out to make a depressing film? No. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I am not a pessimist. I call myself a realistic optimist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the film is addressing very big, critical questions about who gets what out of these resources and why. And it's about sort of the concept of maximum profit and how that translates into the way people behave. And it's about capitalism mm -hmm. and the way it ends up working out for normal people and for companies and for governments and, and all of these interests and how they collide. And while the challenges are enormous, I, I don't think we have to be depressed about, about the outcome. I mean, I think we just need to you know, put our nose to the grindstone, as they say, and, and try and change things if we're not happy with them. Okay, so what's, what's next? What's next in, in the, first of all, can you tell us how people want to see it? Because there are people in yeah. Africa who want to see this no, so No, I appreciate badly. that. I really do. I'm, I'm in the process right now of trying to organize screenings in Ghana, mm. hopefully in the next few months. I want to figure out the same thing specifically in Nigeria. Um, it will eventually be available, you know, digitally and otherwise. It's just I have to make the deals to make it available, and I haven't finished those deals yet. So, you know, fingers crossed it will happen soon. And I'm happy. Can you give a raw, a, a raw I, time frame? I really frame? don't have a time frame. But what I can say, you know, is I have a website, www.bigmenthemovie.com, and mm -hmm. there's a you can sign up to be notified about the release. Okay. And you know, if people do that, I'll keep them posted happily. Awesome. Finally, why do you think? It, it takes people like you to tell this African story. The African filmmakers, they basically make fictional stuff. Well, you know. I don't think it's, okay, this film specifically is a film about a bunch of Americans, right, mm -hmm. who go to Ghana, who find the country's first oil. And it's about their relationship with the government. And then it's intercut with the story in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's coming into the narrative from this American business angle. Right? So I think it makes sense that an American would make this particular film. Mm. Um, there are a lot of really talented filmmakers in Nigeria, in Ghana. Um, I think it's a, very difficult for them to find resources. Yep. You know, financing is a huge hurdle. 
And once a film is made, I think it's extremely difficult to get it seen, right? Mm. And often, I think, given the limited resources, it's very difficult to produce something that's technically of a quality that's going to be, yeah. you know, acceptable yeah. by sort of, you know, Cannes or Berlin or these major film festivals yeah. worldwide, right? You know, it, it, the challenges are, are bigger. And I think most of that has to do with financing. Okay, I said finally, but very finally. Yeah. Is it a contrast between Ghana and Nigeria? Was the film like a contrast between the oil industry in Ghana and that of Nigeria? It's, you know, I, I am very conscious of how different the two countries are. And I appreciate them both on their own terms. Mm. They're very different places with very different people. And the film isn't saying, oh, these two places are alike. Um, but it is saying that people are alike and that people share a certain tendency towards self-interest, mm. wh wherever they're coming from, and that we need to be aware of that, and that that self-interest informs how they behave, and it ultimately affects uh, how people can benefit from it, you know, people at large. Rachel Boynton, thank you so very much oh, for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. It's really an thank honor. You. I appreciate it. And once again, that's an awesome piece of work. Thank you. All thank right. you. So this has been Rachel Boynton, writer, director, producer of the, the, the documentary Big Man. Stay tuned, there's more coming.